Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill and this time we've got a bit of a construction project, a nice simple one um, but hopefully one that's going to prove useful for looking at um, some of my uh, uh, antennas and other bits of RF kit and it's a return loss bridge and it's uh, a bit of kit that I want to use with my spectrum analyzer. Commercial ones are quite expensive so hopefully this is going to um, be uh, good enough for what I want so we'll we'll see because we can we can check it out with the spectrum analyzer once it's finished so let's start by having a look at the uh, the theory behind it and the circuit diagram return loss bridge then uh, essentially is a device that takes a signal in this case the tracking generator from the spectrum analyzer um, feeds it into the device under test which um, in my case is going to be uh, uh, antenna systems and then any return uh, signals that come back are taken off at a sample point which will be fed into the spectrum analyzer input. So in other words, I'm only sampling um, anything that's coming back down the coax. It's not sampling the uh, signal going out. So it's a, a directional couple. It's a bit like half of a VSWR meter perhaps you may be more familiar with. Now Siglent um, do make one um, which uh, would fit very nicely on my spectrum analyzer they're about well they're over 400 pounds here in the uk um, and that's a little um, uh, on the expensive side uh, for my budget so i don't think i'll be bothering to get one uh, they are do however work up to um, to two gigahertz and i've no no doubt that what i'm going to make is going to be um, nothing like as uh, as linear as that but hopefully it's going to I'd be okay for characterizing uh, some of my uh, HF antennas that's certainly uh, what I'd like to use it for so let's have a look at the circuit then and um, hopefully you can see straight away the the bridge element is very obvious in there the RF input on the left uh, goes through a 50 ohm resistor and out to the device under test um, and then the bridge circuit is the two 250 ohm resistors down to ground and then the second 50 ohm resistor with uh, the toroid with its 10 biffler turns on that goes to the detector forms the other half of the bridge. So we are effectively sampling uh, one half um, of the bridge and that's um, going to be fed back into the spectrum analyzer. Now I'm uh, quite keen to um, keep the leads as short as possible so I've bought quite a small diecast box and I intend to do the construction uh, between the the connectors, um, the BNC connectors and the SMA connector in the uh, diecast box. So let's start by uh, looking at um, how I've uh, drilled the holes and hopefully produced a mechanically robust uh, support for the circuit. Okay, so I've got the um, the box uh, marked out and I've put some decent uh, centre punch. Uh, pops just where I want the uh, the drill to make a start. So I'm going to use my uh, drill press to hopefully get the squarest possible holes. I need to end up with nine millimeters and six millimeter holes, but I'm going to start by drilling all three with just uh, a little pilot drill. Um, it just means you end up with a with a, a neater result. It's just this is just about uh, two two and a half millimeters, something like that. Um, and it's going to make uh, easy work of uh, this little uh, this little diecast box, and it just sits just great there on the, on the centre pop. Um, so it's definitely worth um, making a bit of time. I, I confess, in the past when I was making enclosures for things, I drilled the holes a bit randomly and um, never looked very good. And I was determined to try and avoid that this time. Okay, that's the pilot hole. So I'm going to. Um, going to swap to the correct size holes for each uh, drill now or even the uh, right size drill for each of the holes this is a six millimeter drill this is for the SMA connector so I'm going to uh, go straight from the pilot drill to that one that's the SMA connector done I'm going to carry on and actually open out the other two holes with that drill and then I'll do the, the finishing cut
Okay, this is the 9mm drill for the BNC socket, so I'm just going to go through with that. Hopefully it should be relatively straightforward with a pilot hole already drilled. All good, so I'm going to finish the other one and then uh, we're good. Uh, okay, so there's the uh, the three holes, two, two BNCs and uh, SMA, and I'm just going to use a handheld um, uh, larger size drill here just to take the sharp edges off the uh, those holes there that's if you've not don't work with metal very often this is a this is a really um, easy way to just clean up the edges what it doesn't work for is um, is the inside edges but um, hopefully they're not going to be too much of a problem right let's go and um, get the soldering iron warmed up here's the uh, box for the return loss bridge. I've fitted the uh, two BNC sockets and the SMA socket. Um, intention is to use the earth connections on all three to support the um, the bits of circuitry and to try and keep the leads as short as possible. I've also put a dab of uh, super glue onto these um, nuts on the uh, BNC connectors. Um, as I'm aware that when you're twisting these on and off, uh, I wouldn't particularly want them to start moving. So hopefully they're um, they're pretty secure. So next uh, job is to get the soldering iron warmed up and um, start fitting parts. Uh, so the 50 arm resistors. Um, initially, I breadboarded this using uh, some 47 arm resistors, and the circuit seemed okay. But what I've done since then is. I've got some um, some 100 ohm resistors uh, and put them uh, in parallel, giving me um, 50 ohms. And actually, I've checked all all three of these pairs that I've made up, um, and they're about um, 49. Point, I think it's about 49.6 ohms according to my meter. Um, I'm trying to get as near as 50 as possible. So um, first job is going to be putting the um, this 50 ohm resistor here. Um, across between the two uh, sockets and then uh, we can start thinking about how we're going to fit the, the coil. Now I've wound the uh, toroid already, here it is, um, 10 turns biffler wound and uh, if you've done this before you can skip to the next bit, if not um, just take a piece of enamel copper wire of the correct gauge. I've just folded a length in half, uh, made the 10 turns and then cut the fold at the top and then just used um, a meter in continuity mode to identify uh, each of the windings so I've got a little bit of black pen on these two that's uh, that's one winding and that's the other. Um, so I'm going to get the solder and I'm warmed up, fit the first resistor and then I'll come back and show you how progress is. Okay so I've got the um, 50 ohm resistor well the pair of 100 ohm resistors mounted between um, the input and the device under test sockets there and I've now um, also mounted the first winding of the toroid here between the device under test and the detector um, and I've got those windings just about as straight as I can possibly get them come straight out that socket and straight onto the um, SMA uh, socket there. So now next um, bit of work is to put these two 50 ohm resistors into the bridge, attach one end of the um, coil to, to that point there, to, at the midpoint between the resistors, and I'm going to ground this end of the coil, I'm going to ground it to the uh, SMA socket ground connection there. So I'll do that and come back and show you progress. I've connected the um, uh, second side of the uh, transformer to the ground connection on the SMA there, so that's that connection. And I've now um, soldered this pair of 50 ohm resistors, um, that one to the centre connection there, that one to the ground connection there. So I now need to um, join these two here, that, that node there, and then uh, just put the connection on from the toroid and I'm going to try and make those as short as possible and then uh, that should be um, the circuit complete. Okay that's the uh, the wiring completed. I've uh, managed to get this resistive uh, divider here 
um, as short as I possibly can and nice short connection to the um, to the transformer as well uh, and that has resulted in the, the toroid being very securely mounted it's um, clear of any surfaces so next job is to uh, uh, pop the lid on and um, and just uh, give it a quick test see if it's um, uh, doing uh, what I expect Here's the completed bridge. So what I'm going to do is try it out on the spectrum analyzer. So I've got the full span here at the moment, which is 0 to 2.1 gigahertz. I don't expect it to be particularly linear, um, even above VHF, but I want it to use it on HF. But we'll see what it looks like. So I've got tracking generator output attached to the input just with an adapter for now. And I've normalized the plot. And you can see how sensitive this is if I just pick the cable up and move it, it actually starts to affect the trace at the higher frequencies. So that's um, pretty level, so what I'm now going to do is put the, the bridge into circuit, so that's the input connection, and I'm going to attach the tracking generator to the input side, and yep, yeah, okay, straight away you can see there's obviously maybe 10 dB loss there because there's obviously a resistive bridge and in there and other bits of circuitry um, but it's not so bad certainly up to about that's, that's about one gig in the middle starts to get a bit wacky above one gig but that's that's absolutely fine um, I want it for HF so what I'm now going to do um, put the adapter back in momentarily because I want to I want to normalize it for um, the frequency ranges I actually want to use this at. Um, so I'm going to change the frequency now. Start frequency I'm going to go for 1 megahertz. Stop frequency 30 megahertz and I'm going to normalize that. Okay so that's normalized for a 29 megahertz span from 1 to 30 megahertz which is where I actually want to use it. Uh, so we'll now put it back into circuit. Um, okay, here's the tracking generator. Now there we go. Pretty much steady, 10 dB all the way across 30 megahertz. Very pleased with that. So for where I want to use this, it's clearly it's clearly nice and flat. Um, now what I've got here is my HF vertical. Um, it's meant to be tri-band uh, 14, 21 and 28 megahertz. It has three tunable radials. Um, I've never tuned them. I only ever use it for receiving. Uh, in fact, I use a, um, a doublet antenna if I ever I transmit, which isn't that often. Um, so there we go. That's um, what the HF antenna looks like. Um, and the dips there are um, the resonant frequencies um, and that's where the lowest um, VSWR will be. So let's just um, uh, pop a marker there and just see where that is roughly. So I'm just it's a bit imprecise but yeah there you go it's about it's just about 15 megahertz um, let's get a, a second marker and see where this second dip is um, so the second dip about 22 megahertz so as you can see it, need, it definitely would need um, a tuning if you wanted to use it without an ATU for transmitting uh, what we can do however and I'll just um, while I've got that I'm just also going to take a uh, just take a, a grab of that screen for reference uh, what we do have the ability on here is to actually do a return loss measurement. So let's go into the measure and reflection. And what's quite nice about that is it's now telling me my first marker uh, and second marker. It's showing me uh, where they are and roughly what the, the VSWR would be. So if I pop back onto markers for a moment and see if I can just tweak that a little bit it's really fussy so um, 
Let's try moving the. No, not going to get that. But you, you can obviously see VSWR dips quite a bit. And if I come to the top there, that's a, a VSWR of goodness knows how much. But down here, it's uh, um, quite close to something sensible. Let's just um, let's just change the bandwidth there to. Um, that's 100 kilohertz. That's going to slow the span down, but. Um, might allow me to get a slightly closer view of what the SWR is now. OK, well, not to worry. But you can clearly see there's the um, the shape of the graph. graph. So we'll take um, another grab of that one. Um, OK, and uh, I'm just going to uh, do one more test. So I'll just get set up for that and just uh, be back in a moment. Because I've reset the analyzer up, currently um, straight through and I've got it normalized now and I've gone from 1 to 500 megahertz just interested to see what this might be like for use on uh, on VHF and UHF I'm not anticipating great performance but it will just be interesting to see um, okay oh well that's not actually too bad really um reasonably that's uh, 250 megahertz in the center so certainly pretty flat all the way up to about um, 200 megahertz so it'll be pretty good on on vhf um, and if i pop my hf antenna back on there see what it's like further up the band there you can see this <laughs> um, there's plenty of nulls there um, that's yeah there you go that's my tri-band hf vertical um, obviously got quite a wide span on there let's just pop on i'm going to just uh, grab that Let's just pop on to um, measure ref and reflection, and yeah, there's a couple of um, quite reasonable um, lows there. Whoops, sorry, I forgot that's a touch screen. Um, yeah, okay, marker one, 61 megahertz, and it's down to 1.3. That's interesting. Shame we haven't got a, a 60 megahertz band, but there you go. Um, and it's even lower here, so I'm just uh, out of fascination, just going to see what that actually is and where it is. Yeah, I'm really pleased with that. That's pretty flat all the way to 500 megahertz. So, good project. Well, I'm pleased with those results and um, hopefully it's going to prove useful. I need to make a, a bit of a, a label so I can see what uh, what all the ports are and then I can just wipe off my little uh, Sharpie mark there saying which is the device under test port. Um, so I'm going to get that done, but um, certainly from a practical point of view, very pleased with that. That's good enough, certainly well good enough for me up to 500 megahertz, which is um, better than I was expecting, to be honest. So if you want to have a go, um, I'd encourage you to do it. It's a relatively simple project and um, seems to have worked out quite well. Thanks very much for watching. Um, if you've liked it, please click thumbs up. If not, you can click thumbs down. Either way, I appreciate uh, your time. Uh, be great if you could subscribe if you aren't already and let others know about the channel as well. That would be good. And we'll see you on the next one.